Hey guys and gals, Joshua LeMay here. So, I'm here to discuss uh, Jim Wendler's 5 through 1, which is a form of wave or linear periodization. So, firstly, what is it? So, every program has a structure, with a range of intensities and reps. So, what what does this program look like in exercises? So, it basically has four exercises, squat, bench, press, and deadlift. Four days dedicated to this. So this could be Tuesday, Thursday, fr Friday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, Friday, or any any four days. Maybe it's better to think about it of the days that you want off. Where you could have, generally, it's, and you can order the squat, bench, press, and deadlift in any variation. I would just go two days on, one day off, two days on, Two days off. So how this is periodized is it goes five reps week one for 65, 75, and 85 percent. And the final set is what's called a plus set. So basically like these were two uh, warm-up sets. So for instance, this would be like five reps in reserve. This would be three reps in reserve. And this would be a working set of 10 reps or... Um, now nah, I'd probably be like eight or five, but the general idea is these first two sets allow you to do, or warm up sets that allow you to do more work on the final set, and then they also contribute to the volume. Week two, it's three reps at seventy percent, three reps at eighty percent, then an M rep set at ninety percent. Then week three, it's five reps at seventy five percent, three reps at eighty five percent, and M rep at 95%. So in general, you're going from 10 reps to 8 reps to 3 reps. So it's almost like going from a volume phase to an intensity phase. And then you have you have a deload which is 5 reps at 40%, 50%, and 60%. Also, I'm going to attach a spreadsheet to calculate all this. But in general, you have to know, you just know these percents, and you can plug it into a calculator. But the thing is, it has to be 90, 85 to 90% of your one rep max, and I'd go with a provable one rep max. So if you did, say, 300 pounds on the deadlift for three reps, I'd use the 300 as your one rep max, whatever your best known weight is. So... The other component of this program is you have a warm-up. So this would just be ramping sets where it could be like 40, 50, 60%. The particular isn't um, important. Just the main thing is it can't be 5 pounds. It can't be 5 pounds and 5 pounds. You have to add, say, 20 pounds and generally scale it back where it would be like 120 for 5, 140 for 3, 160 for 1, and then you get into the work sets of like 180 for 5, 200 for five and then an amrap set and then you can cool down here's the thing i just do these three sets because two sets is enough of a warm-up and i don't need i don't need to cool down i'm not going to um injure myself if i don't do more so i don't cool down but that could be a way to work in more volume and then there's also one of the ways to add in more volume is what's called first set last where basically you take this you take the first set of your working sets and you do that one last time i would i, I want to make another consideration where it's like um i would leave in the deload just because that structures your program or you get used to you get used to deloading i don't see it as a waste of time because if you're in this program for a year you know you're so we're gonna we're going to get into forms of periodization, but the main thing is you add month, um, you add weight month to month, and, you know, if you add weight every month, you know, you should be getting stronger versus trying to run a novice program over and over again. So, here's the forms of periodization. There's linear progression where you're adding weight to your sets of five, or sets of ten, but usually it's sets of five. This concurrent periodization, which would be, say, seven by three. 
five by five and five by ten. So you'd have a volume day. You'd have a you'd have an endurance day. You'd have a volume day, and then you'd have a strength day. But concurrent periodization is where you work with different rep rep schemes. I'm gonna ignore that. Oh shoot! It's a text. I gotta. Oh, it's just somebody wants me to work for them. Conjugate method. So you'd have a day where you do your one rep max. You do, you focus on power slash speed. So you do equipped lifting, and then you'd have a rep day for volume. Then there's linear periodization. This is more what this is. That's where you increase the weight but drop the reps. So this is the community is calling this wave periodization. I, I really don't see the point because it's just, it's like instead of going up and then resetting, you're going to go up and then reset, then up. It's just faster, it's faster linear periodization where it's like 10, then 8, then 5. But say if you're doing linear where you start at like say 15, then you go 10, then 8, then 5, then 3, and then you have a meet week and then you have a deload. So linear periodization is just longer and then if you wanted to make it more advanced, you could add you could add sets so you could work at each rep range. And that's when you have accumulation blocks like that, it's been argued that that's mainly more for steroid users because they respond better to more volume. Whereas naturals uh, respond better to increases in intensity. Now, so who is this for? So we have training advancements, and I highlighted it in blue to represent more complexity. So actually, I've got to highlight this differently. Let's highlight. Okay, so you have beginners. These guys, with the exception of motor mor morons, they get better within the workout where they, they're like, hey, can I try that again? And then they do more weight and more reps. And then they, they keep adding weight and adding reps in the workout where it's like they could start off with just a bar and by the end they're deadlifting 135. Then a novice is somebody who can add weight each workout. This could, this could happen from three to eight months. And eight months sounds like a lot, but you actually want to advance as a novice because the guy who can advance as a novice for eight months and then the last month as an advanced novice, that is the guy who can who can use linear progression to get up to a 500-pound squat. Then there's the intermediates. These guys advance, advance week to week. So generally, they'll follow something like a, high, a, a heavy, light, medium, or they'll, incor they'll incorporate days where they're working on intensity and days where they're working on volume. Then the mid to Mid to late intermediates use four to three to four week cycles. This is this is where linear periodization comes in, but the sort of or more wave periodization where you have ten reps, then eight reps, and five reps. And the advantage of this is you can psychologically psychologically you can you can make gains in each of these rep ranges, whereas you might only you only adapt once. But the thing is, it also allows you to make advancements without working in the five rep range every week. Then there's early advance. Usually these guys focus on... If then you haven't gone to sports-specific training, you advance to something such as the conjugate method. I don't really want to get into that, but here's... So, 531 is generally for... Um, mid to for intermediates, you could use this for novice novices, but it would be a waste of time unless you were highly opposed to gaining fat. Now, let's get into progression. So, generally, you add weight month to month, uh, as if you were adding, as if you were a novice, no, normally, it'd be in the ballpark of what you'd add at the beginning of a novice line linear progression. So here's my maxes. So for instance, I calculated that it would be a two, 245 max on the squat. For everything else, like for the bench, I went with my one rep max. So these are my lifts. 315, I could do 320 for five, but I detrained 
because I was only hitting deadlift on starting strength every four or five workouts. So I basically detrained because I was missing workouts because it was getting grind grindy. <laughs> you know, oh, you, you stopped at two places. I'm like, yeah, it's just my... My working weights for the bench were almost at the squat. So everybody goes off the squat because it's seen as the best exercise for um, for gaining muscle. <laughs> you know, versus people saying, what can you bench? But these are... Now, for chin-ups, if you're going to do chin-ups either as an accessory or as an additional day, which wouldn't be the program, but you could add... You could add a chin-up day. What I would do is I'd have a, I'd have assistance. If you're doing it at a 10 rep max and you can only do 7 reps or you're trying to do a 10 rep max, you can add assistance through bands and then you can add weight. If, you're, if you can do 7 reps but you want to do 5, you can add weight. Now how you would calculate your 1 rep max is without just doing one rep max with how much weight I can add, I take my body weight at, in the reps and put that into a one rep calculator. Now, next, what are the pros of this and what is to powerlifting? And some of these are pros to bodybuilding as well. So you train everything once a week. So if you train bench, bench press, squat, and deadlift once a week versus... Versus strong lifts where you train, you train deadlift every other workout, or starting strength at the end where you train every four or five workouts. Depends, yeah. And the main thing is this tends to bury you because you squat once a week rather than something by Bell Star or HLM or Texas Method or starting strength or strong lifts where you're st squatting three times a week. The thing is, if you have the wrong, um, I think it's called, if your body's basically not built to squat, where it's like, sometimes your limb lengths give you really poor leverages, and then squatting can be into the ground. Now, in, in fact, later in squat programs, you have to add a light squat there. Now, so the main, the main advantage, the biggest advantage I see is that it you tend not to overeat as much. You don't have to put five pounds on your squat every week until you're microloading and then adding two and a half. But the idea, idea of a linear progression is you're adding weight to your squat every week, ideally five pounds, and then that could add that could mean adding significant scale weight every single workout or every two days. You're not going to gain more than two pounds of muscle your first month as a novice. And then at the end of the year, it could be half a pound to one pound. So the thing is, like, in Star Strength, Mark Ribito claims that his guys gained 30 pounds of muscle in, in you know, they're in the three months that they ran their LP. The guys ran their LP, and he claims that's typical. Well, you look at the guys that gained 10 pounds of usable weight, and 40 pounds of fluff. So, granted, the thing is, mass moves mass, even if it's fat, bone, connective tissue, water, everything, right? You're doing a squat. It the main the main force is the compression, and you're trying to rebound, right? So, say I um, say I have a spring, right? I have a spring. The the thicker the coils, you know, I can add stuff. And then say you're doing the bench, like. If I have fat here, it compresses. You know, you can put, you can have stuff, you can put a, like, knife on a stick of butter. You can stack things on sticks of butter. You can even, like, if this is an architecture thing, you fold, fold a piece of paper, right? Say I fold a piece of paper like this. I can now, I can now put weight on it. You fold enough pieces of paper and you line them up, you can actually stack books on them. Next, the next um, thing that's good about this is you can set more PRs. So, for instance, it's like say you say you're um, 
you can set PRs where it's like you're comparing this week to the week last month's first week. So you have basically three microcycles in a deload. So you can compare the first week of this month to the the first week of next month. So you're looking back and you're looking back at your 10 rep max, your 8 rep max, your 5 rep max, and you're comparing. Next, you can, uh, a big advantage is the flexibility of this program. You can customize accessories. So we're going to get into the accessories. Let's just make sure we're still recording. Okay, so this is called Boring But Big. This is the most popular accessory. So you, on your overhead press date, you do 5 by 10 and you do chin ups five by ten on your deadlift day. You do, so on all these you do the you do the main lift, but on deadlifts you do hanging leg raises, dumbbell on bench day you do dumbbell rows, and squat you do leg curls. So it's it kind of would be, you know, for instance, if you're doing the squat you do the bottom part of your leg. If you do the bench you do back. So it's kind of like I almost think you could superset these where you have two barbells and you're going between the, the 10 rep sets, but this would be at about 67% or about your 12 rep max, so you get about 15 effective reps. Now, this is called the triumvirate. I think the main thing is you could um, you could come up with your own accessories, but these are the suggested ones. It would be like on the press day, you do dips and chin-ups. Uh, deadlifts, you do good mornings and hang, hanging leg raises. Bench day, you do dumbbell rows. So this is more of a powerlifting program where it's like leg press, build a squat. Dumbbell bench, build a bench. So you're trying to build stuff but, minima but minimize uh, overuse injuries. Now, the next, this, <laughs> this is my favorite. The Existence Work 3, I ain't doing shit. So there's no accessories. You just do the three work sets, maybe some warm ups, maybe some back offs. But you can just do the three workouts. So it's nothing, but I suggest adding a fifth day for chin ups. So for instance, I forgot where I put it. Um, there were basically, for instance, I'd add chin ups because you basically have a hip hinge in the deadlift, you have the squad. You have two pressing moments, so I'd add a chin-up day or a row day, or you could do six days, where you're only doing three sets, but you're only doing one working set. But here's the thing, if you go from doing nothing to doing one working one working set for each movement pattern, but say you're doing three sets for each body part, you're going to gain about half the, half the muscle you could have gained in a year. Or half the muscle each month. But here's the thing. Like for instance. If if you could gain two this month. To your first month. You'll gain one. But then if you could gain 1.9. You'll still. You'll gain like 1.95. It, it won't diminish as quickly. So after. So you'll be in five years. Where you could have been in four years. But the thing is. You're going to need to add more volume. But the main thing is. You can feel good. You can have the positive hormonal effects of working out, and you can get at, in and out of the gym. This is basically for people with busy lives. And then the thing is, if you do it right, for instance, say you set up the squat, and then you do the press, and then you move it over to the bench, and then you do move your bar over to the deadlift. Actually, if you have three bars, if you have one in the squat rack, one... <laughs> One in the squat rack, one on your bench, and one on the floor. You only have to move your bar, you know, once a day. But if you have multiple bars, you can do it less. So, so it one of the most time-consuming things about the workout is changing, chain moving the bar from space to space because you literally have to unload what unload reload, reload, and reload in between. So this is called the Periodization Bible. This is mainly based off of a program that was a complete joke. But this is more of a bodybuilding routine where I accidentally wrote quads. Quads instead of quads. So you'd, you'd have on your bench and press day, you do a shoulder press workout, you do a lat workout, you do a tricep, and on your deadlift day, you do hamstring, quads, and abs. 
So you're trying to bring up lagging body parts and work the whole body. Now this is the fifth and final access accessory or assistant movement where you just do 75 reps of each of these. Chins, dips, glute ham raises, leg raises, push-ups, one-legged squats, or if you can't do that, light lunges and sit-ups. The problem, this is great if you have a home gym and you're in isolation. For instance, you can't do, um, you don't have machines for leg curls, you don't have... You don't have as many dumbbells. You don't... Honestly, you could do most of these. Oops. But, you know, sometimes when... Sometimes you might not hear or there have the equipment, and it could be pretty hokey. Here's the problem I have with this. This is about... Um, you might have to learn how to do... Um, harder variation. So, for instance, how would you progress in your assistance movements? You could just, you know, add five pounds. For instance, for, say you're doing boring but big, you could add five pounds or, you know, you'd have that increase, but you do five pounds heavier each month, depending on upper body or lower body. But, the thing is, it progresses month to month. It This is added where it's 5, 5 by 10, or 5 by 12, or 5 by 20, where whatever you're working with, you're going to work with that weight the whole month. And the main thing is, it's, it's mainly volume. But the thing about this, the thing about this program is it's body weight, and the reason... Part of the reason behind this program is it's more focused on being athletic, where you ideally in a workout you'd warm up and stretch, you'd lift your weights, and then you do your conditioning. You know, so you might stretch, go for a run. I mean, stretch, lift weights, then go for a run. Now, the whole idea behind this program is there's two things. I'm just going to exit out. Um, there's two things. So you're trying to have gradual increases, but you're trying to actually get more athletic where you're trying to put on, build muscle, but you're trying to kind of increase relative strength. It's not for equipped power lifters. Um, but at the same time, it's not a weightlifting program. Not like, I mean, like Olympic lifting where it's like power clean, snatch, deadlift, so the general idea that is that if you can get to an intermediate level in strength, you'll be better at basketball. You'll be better at running. For instance, I knew a ch champion runner team. They were state champions, and their whole stick was training to get um, maximum basically maximum volume on the squat. They were training to lift heavy on the squat, but they were training basically boring but big where they do four by 10, but then also they'd test their one rep max where you know they'd get up to three to 400 pound squats, but these are 130 pound runners. This is, <laughs> you know, basically, um, so the whole thing is it's about being optimized for your goals where it's like if you want to do power lifting, you want to do bodybuilding, you want to do, um, for instance, we had the boring but big. That's a good power lifting program. We had the focus on body parts. And then the whole, the whole mentality behind it is, um, I'm going to wrap this up, but before that, I, I'm saying the whole mentality behind that is, you know, can I just put five pounds on my bench and can I have that consistency? Where it's like most of us won't be athletes, so I'm like, how can this benefit me? One last thing, my approach is to add chin ups and then I'm gonna pick a template. I'm not sure which one. It might involve learning exercises because I'm an early intermediate. But the thing is, um the thing is 
And some of my numbers are crap because I'm short. <laughs> um, I've had uh, I've had you know doctors and nurses amplify for so. And then the, also the thing is, it's I just you know. The weird thing is you can progress. Um, you can progress at things you're good at the same way as you progress at things you're terrible at. So there are guys. Um, there, you know, say, say for instance, say for instance, you're learning musical instruments. Well, if this, this guy knows these three instruments, this guy wants to play these three instruments, but he already knows this one. He might know the particulars. He might be getting better, you know, almost exponentially in an upward linear fashion, but the other instruments, he's almost flat until he... Until he works out, until a fl uh, switch flips, and suddenly, so for instance, in your foreign language classes, you know, there's guys, there's guys who, you know, <laughs> you know, basically, you'll get into Spanish three, French three, you know, Chinese, Japanese, whatever the language is. You get into the third year, and then there's <laughs> there's the guy who cheats and doesn't doesn't know the language and then there's the guy who's put you know guy or gal who's practically fluent but the so you know, that's um the main thing um last thing my goal my goal is to get as strong as possible so i believe you can keep gaining you know, until, at least I think I can keep gaining until I'm 40. Not, I'm just thinking it's going to take that many years where it's like, um, basically there is no natty limit provided that you're at least 15% body fat, provided that you're not getting anywhere in your contest shredded. For instance, it's like, I don't look that big because... My upper half of my body, you know, it's like I suck at squats. I'm decent at deadlifts. I'm amazing at bench, but my upper, my upper body is smaller than my legs. That's the thing. Some some guys, um, some guys are really strong going into the gym initially, where they'll deadlift 585 pounds because they, you know, they did, they just are a laborer. But that's all I got. Talk to you guys later.